broken Bakelite cabinets. Just filling Bakelite cracks with adhesive is seldom good enough. The break should be reinforced. Here is a worst case scenario, a case with previous repair temps. This is a 1929 Siemens RFE33 broadcast receiver in a Bakelite cabinet. This is a very early for a Bakelite radio cabinet and the radio chassis is very heavy. Far too heavy for a Bakelite molding with such relatively thin walls and wholly inadequate internal reinforcing ribs. This photo shows less than half of the damaged areas of the cabinet. The smears you see are epoxy residue. One way to remove it is to lay scrap cloth over the surface and saturate with acetone, lacquer thinner that is. Lay a couple of sheets of plastic wrap over the soaked cotton, then lay a piece of cotton terry cloth on top followed by a sheet of scrapped MDF shelving or any other material to provide a weighted cushion to keep the solvent against the old adhesive. Be patient. An overnight weight would be ideal. Then remove the softened epoxy with a plastic scraper and rags soaked with more solvent. Before I started my work here, there was an opening crack that I stabilized with this aluminum foil tape. If you have a cabinet with badly assembled pieces using epoxy glue, it would be ideal to try to separate the pieces. This may not be possible because there are running cracks. If so, try to bring the cracks together as much as possible immediately after finishing your cleanup with solvent. Use whatever clamps are necessary to bring the cracks together. Maybe use a strap clamp. If not possible, Consider applying self-stick aluminum foil tape across the cracks. Take time to burnish the tape for the best adhesion. It can be easily removed later with a heat gun set on low. Now you are ready to work inside your cabinet. Someone had attempted to apply what I think is a black epoxy potting compound to use as a filler and backing for the cracks that had been glued with some sort of clear two-part epoxy adhesive. The red arrows point to chips in the old compound showing almost no bonding to the Bakelite. Leveling this sloppy work proved very difficult. 60 or 80 grit aluminum oxide sandpaper filled very fast. The best tool I found for removal is a high quality slitting saw blade driven by a Dremel tool running at a relatively low speed. Of course, proper eye protection, a steady grip, and a dust mask should be considered mandatory. What to use as reinforcement? Fiberglass cloth seems to be a natural for this application. There is a wide range of cloth weights. It is sold by weight per square yard. 7.5 ounce is easily available at auto parts stores. You will want to have a lighter weight cloth on hand as well. 0.5 to 1.5 ounce weight. The traditional way to bond the cloth is to use a liquid mix of two-part epoxy resin. Applying a coat of resin to the surface and then laying in a blanket of the cloth followed by enough resin to saturate the cloth. The resin can take several hours to reach maximum strength. Another way is to saturate the cloth with low viscosity cyanoacrylate CA adhesive. This requires an accelerator curing agent. Apply too much curing agent and the adhesive will cure too fast and generate too much heat. The resulting cured adhesive can be much too brittle. Have a hog bristle brush handy to tap down the cloth into the resin. Keep the brush thoroughly cleaned in solvent and use when it's completely dry.
A better method is to use a UV cure adhesive. These adhesives can provide superior peel strength adhesion to Bakelite. A 50 milliliter bottle of hard type resin can be in your mailbox from China for less than $10. It is commonly sold for jewelry and other craft uses. Don't buy larger containers. Most products are only usable for a year, maybe a bit longer if refrigerated. The repairs made on this project were extensive, but required only the contents of a 10 milliliter bottle. You can buy a UV cure lamp powered from a USB charger for about $15 on eBay. The charger is not included. Any generic charger, phone charger, rated at a nominal 5 volts at a minimum of 1 amp will work just fine. Applying UV Cure Adhesive gives you plenty of time to work out air bubbles and push away excess resin. Adhesion is everything. Once you have removed old repairs as much as possible, the surface needs to be roughened using sandpaper. The sanding does not have to be extensive, just enough to present a uniform cloudy surface. Wipe clean with a gauze pad. 4x4 four four inch gauze pads are ideal for this use. Degrease the surface with acetone or isopropyl alcohol on a new gauze pad. This is difficult to photograph. Two beads of the UV cure adhesive were laid down. Then a sheet of fiberglass cloth is laid over the adhesives. You use the dry hog bristle brush and tweezers to position the cloth. Then you lay a sheet of clear mylar film over the cloth. You can now use your finger to massage the resin into the cloth and force air bubbles to the edge of your cloth. You will probably find that you applied too little or too much resin. Carefully lift the mylar sheet and add or remove resin as necessary. Replace the sheet and smooth out again. Keep the sheet in place and bring the UV lamp into position. This lamp held very close will cure in 20 seconds through a layer of fiberglass roving cloth. But for best finish, leave an additional minute or two before peeling off the mylar film. You will have an almost transparent patch. Here I elected to apply a thin sheet of fiberglass cloth. It simply makes it easier to see that I have brought the cloth into the closest possible contact with the cracks. I can immediately proceed to lay down more beads of adhesive onto which I can lay a second sheet of the heavier weight roving cloth. After you are finished applying whatever reinforcements are necessary, apply a coat of flat colored spray paint to match your cabinet. 